welcome back to another episode of Adoptions from the Heart TV. I'm your host, Amanda Alberti. So people often wonder how has COVID affected the adoption world? So today we'd like to welcome Katie and Stephanie, social workers at Adoptions from the Heart, to talk a little bit about how COVID has affected our agency, adoption in general, the clients we work with, the procedures we have, just so that we can shed light to what's currently happening. So welcome to Katie and Stephanie. Hello. Now, Katie works out of our Virginia office and Stephanie works in our central Pennsylvania area, which I know is two uh, very different locations. But can you both maybe share a little bit about when COVID first hit, how our agency responded and how your performance as social workers changed? Yeah, so I mean, our hospitals completely shut down. So we weren't allowed in to some hospitals. Some hospitals were considering us essential personnel. So they were letting us come in, but maybe they weren't letting the adoptive parents come in. So we completely had to rethink and retrain our brains as to how do we make this work so that our expecting and birth parents can feel comfortable and confident in their decisions and feeling that comfort level with the families, but also keeping families and everyone safe. And so we just sort of had to retrain our brains a little bit. I mean, we came up with creative ways. I know for one of my placements, I basically was on FaceTime with the family. And then I was on FaceTime with the birth mom um, after delivery. So although I couldn't be there, I was there virtually as much as humanly possible. So, and then other cases we were having the hospital give us discharge the babies to us. And then we were kind of going out into parking lots and doing placements in the parking lot. So we just, in our area, and I'm sure with Katie too, we had to be really creative in how making it work so that it was best for everybody. Sure, sure. How about for you, Katie? Definitely. It's it's pretty similar. It was pretty similar down here. For the most part, we were considered essential workers. So we as a social worker were able to go in, but adoptive parents weren't always allowed to go in. Or if they were allowed to get go in, only one of them was able to go in there. So there was a lot of Zoom, a lot of video calling. It was really just kind of like Stephanie said, retraining yourself and to what the new normal was with with COVID and with hospitals and placements and trying to make it as best and as easy on everyone as possible. Well, and I think in general, life is very different, right? So trying to navigate making decisions for yourself, for the people around you professionally, personally, has been challenging across the board. Can you guys talk about like moments that you had to make some difficult decisions about whether or not you were going to step foot into a hospital room, maybe where a birth mom had been exposed to COVID or um, just like whether or not you should leave or not leave and having to balance you, your job, getting the job done, being there for your clients, that sort of thing. And I, I think for you, Katie, you actually went into a room where a mom had been exposed. Can you can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, so I got a call or um, my supervisor, Nicole, got a call for a little ways away um, in Petersburg. And so I went there and I had no idea that she was, she was COVID positive, the hospital, and and she did not relay that to me. So when I got there, I was a little taken aback. It it was a little nerve wracking. You know, I've I've never knowingly gone into a, in a hospital room with someone that I knew was positive for COVID, Um, but she was asymptomatic. And I just did what the nurses have been doing the whole time, put the gown on, put my hair up, put a mask on an N95 mask as well and did the gloves and everything that you've been seeing with hospitals and I did that and went in there and counseled with her and did paperwork with her and she was able to find a family that she connected with and so we were able to do a couple Zoom meetings since they weren't able to meet her in person and through that we, we created a really great connection and then moving forward, baby girl, she was tested twice um, to see if she was positive for COVID. First was a rapid test, then it was a PCR test, which can be a little more accurate. And both of those were negative. So I think what we've been seeing is even if mom is COVID, COVID positive, babies 
typically or sometimes aren't. So that was a that was a relieving feeling as well. And the adoptive family was actually able to come up and they had to have masks with baby girl, but it was it was a different experience. It was a learning experience, but I'm glad I got to experience that and see moving forward what we might have to do. Sure, sure. How about for you, Stephanie? Yeah, I have asthma. So there were some certainly in the very, very beginning where I had to really think about how can I make this work for the adoptive parents, the birth parents, the hospital and me. Um, and so it was just a lot of communication with the hospital staff and with adoptive families and birth parents and having great relationships with hospital staff was certainly very helpful um, and we were able to navigate it and so you know maybe there were times where the adoptive family was up on the floor but I was sort of in the in the waiting room um, so that everybody wasn't all there together um, and just doing the same protocols that Katie talked about wearing our masks gowning up wearing our gloves trying to keep our six feet of distance um, with each other and just making sure that we were all doing what was best for all of us as as well. But in the beginning, for sure, when we didn't have all the information that we do now about COVID, there were some scary moments. Yeah, absolutely. How do you guys think our placement numbers have been, um, you know, right at the beginning, during, and even up until today? Where do you think our numbers generally are, like in terms of being affected by COVID? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think we saw a dip in some of the in the placements in 2021. I think more so than 2020. I think 2020 was a lot of babies that were conceived in 2019. So we didn't see it as much in 2020 as I think we did in 2021, where, you know, we could see the impact that it was having um, on everybody and the world. And so they definitely have decreased, but I have, I feel like in the past several months, we have been getting more intakes in women who are interested in maybe thinking about adoption and men who are thinking about adoption and see, have seen an increase in, in placement. So I definitely think that we're seeing where the vaccines became available and where we had more information and we had more knowledge uh, um, and we knew. And that trend was not just in our agency, it was a nationwide trend. They were seeing it across the board, across the country. So it just wasn't us here at Adoptions from the Heart. That was something that was happening at a national level as well. And how about for you, Katie, down in Virginia? Was that similar to, to what Stephanie's describing? Yeah, very similar. So 2020, pretty much it, it was similar um, in, in terms of numbers, but 2021 is where we really saw a dip in, in placements and, um, and intakes as well. And I think it's starting to go up in intakes a little bit now, but I think that happened all over. And even in my home study, only adoptive parents I've, I've seen with, with their agencies as well, just a dip in, in placements too. Sure, sure. I mean, now we're in 2022. It's been, what, over two years now of dealing with the pandemic. Where do you guys think, in general, clients, staff members, where do you think everybody is right now in terms of COVID and how we're feeling about things and how we're handling things? I think people are starting to get a little more relaxed, at least down here in Virginia. There's still masks and, and this and that, but I think people are trying to get back to to a normal. And I've been seeing just with with hospitals and, and with APs and BPs, I've just been seeing more of wanting to get together and have visits and see one another and be in person and have that human connection. Sure. Yeah, I, I definitely think we're seeing the same thing here um, in our area in Pennsylvania. We're definitely seeing that wanting to see each other and to be together and to have that human connection as well. But you're right, I still think everybody still has their own personal comfort level of what that looks like. So we definitely still see some families who are getting together, but maybe they're still wearing their masks. Maybe they're not. That's okay. You know, it's whatever your comfort level is at that moment. And, you know, I definitely think that we're seeing a better understanding of how COVID works. So, you know, if there is an uptick in a certain area in a hospital, you know, they're taking the necessary precautions as well, but maybe that's not affecting us as a whole region. It's just maybe a particular area. And so I think everybody is just keeping a good 
handle on what does it look like in your particular area at your particular time and what your own personal comfort level is. Sure, sure. Well, we appreciate both of you. I, I think everyone across the board is trying to manage COVID the best that they can, including adoptions from the heart. Um, our families, our, our birth parents, our expecting parents, everyone has been very uh, accommodating and, and flexible, which has made our jobs that much easier because I think we're all in the same pot. We're trying to figure this out and manage life the best that we can. So thank you both again for sharing your stories and experiences with COVID. Hopefully this won't be forever, <laughs> um, but we're, we're grateful that we are a team. We've been able to change our policies and procedures in accordance with what's happening. We're all trying to be as safe as possible and still be able to build beautiful families through adoption. So thank you both. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll talk to you soon.